It has been a long and tough second half for the Royals' bullpen. After pitching another five and a third innings last night, they could use a break tonight. Sean O'Sullivan makes his second start for the Royals and his first at home. Royals baseball is next on Fox Sports Kansas City. The Royals and Orioles needed 11 innings last night to decide game one. The Orioles ended a five-game losing streak. The Royals will try to do the same tonight in game two. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Royals Hall of Famer Frank White. I'm Ryan Lefevre, and tonight is Law Enforcement Night at Kauffman Stadium, so we'll have several members of law enforcement from Kansas City at the ballpark. We hope they have a good time, and to honor them, all of us on Fox Sports Kansas City are wearing golf shirts with the badge of the fraternal order of police in today's game frank if a bullpen is having a tough stretch your team is having a tough stretch and the royals in the second half in the bullpen have had a tough time they've also had a heavy workload i think it goes back to the workload and you go back to quality starts if the Royals quality starts are up in the bullpen it's usually pretty good going into the all-star break they were good now the quality starts have gone down they've been asking the bullpen to get too many outs and if you keep them the six outs they usually pitch very well but lately, they've been trying to get two innings and out of each one of those guys down there. And when you stretch them out like that, you're just not going to get the same result. So the Royals hoping for a long outing tonight from Sean O'Sullivan. Well, got to have a strong outing from Sean. And they'd love to get seven innings out of him. The bullpen would definitely take him out to dinner after that. But he's got a sneaky fastball, great change up, pitches down in the zone, and he has great poise on the mound. Jake Arrieta is pitching for the Orioles, a rookie. First time the Royals will see him. The Royals have done well this year against rookies in the American League. The way Davis has pitched well against the Royals, but the Royals have been able to take advantage of everyone else as a rookie. And what you try to do with rookies is they're nervous. You try to play on that. You try to take them out of their game early, and the Royals have been able to do that. With Scott Pesednik on, the Royals are still looking for a regular leadoff man. Last night it was Willie Bloomquist against a left-hand pitcher. Tonight it's Chris Getz against the righty. We'll talk about the Orioles offense when we come back.
Cardinals baseball is brought to you tonight by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. And by Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. Two off seasons ago, the Baltimore Orioles signed Nick Markakis to a six-year contract extension. He is among the league leaders in doubles this year, and he always seems to come up with a big hit against the Royals. Brian, I think one of the big reasons is bad numbers, two right behind Brian Roberts, who has great speed, and then he gets a lot more fastballs hit, and he takes, takes great advantage of it. 27 games reaching base, and those are one of 22 of those games. The Orioles are second from the bottom in the American League in runs scored this year, but last night they scored six runs. Here's their batting order tonight, presented by M&I Bank. And the top of the order has seen Sean O'Sullivan, and they beat him around pretty good last year in two starts when he was pitching for the Angels. Sean O'Sullivan makes his second start for the Royals. Here's the Kia report. But the one thing he's got to do, Ron, is stay, stay on task. No relaxing. Yankees score four runs with two outs in the third. Stay away from the big inning. He is familiar with the K. Defeated the Royals 10-2 in 09 with, while with the Angels. And while a lot of the bullpen has had a tough time recently, Kyle Farnsworth has been rolling along. Same with Joaquin Soria. So the game plan tonight, hopefully O'Sullivan can hand it off to the back end of the bullpen. It's game two with the Royals and the Orioles, and the first pitch is next. Cable for HD is free with digital cable. Let's go out to right field. Here's Joel Goldberg. Well, Ryan, as the Royals try to figure out who their leadoff hitter is, the Orioles finally don't have that question. We saw Brian Roberts last night, recently off the disabled list here, and talking to Juan Samuel today, he said that Brian Roberts, more than anybody else, stabilizes that lineup. And they've got the worst record in baseball, but maybe now with Brian Roberts back, things changes a little bit because he said he knows now that he can put him out there at second base every single day when he's going right. He said before they were using three, maybe four different second basemen. He said, look at Nick Markakis' numbers. His RBIs are down, but maybe with Brian Roberts in there, 
that changes because he said all it takes is for Roberts to get on. He will find a way then, then to get to third base with less than two outs. That creates runs. Also great chemistry with shortstop Cesar as tourists. So look for Brian Roberts once again to be in the middle of everything for the Orioles, guys. As he was last night, Joel, two more hits, a double, scored a couple of runs. Tonight is law enforcement night at Coffin Stadium, and some members of the law enforcement will be working. That's Darren Ivey, who has worked in the Royals' dugout for many years. Some will be sitting in the stands enjoying the game, and we are all wearing golf shirts tonight with the badge of the Fraternal Order of Police to honor them and their work. And now the Royals going to work with the Baltimore Orioles. So Brian Roberts playing in just his 10th game since coming back from the disabled list in his 10th game all season. And he goes after the first pitch and fouls it away. Well, Joel hit on a good point with, with Brian Roberts. He's, he's a great leadoff hitter. Once he's on, he can steal bases. And, and if you're lucky enough to be bad number two when he's getting on the base slide, you're going to get more fastballs. And, and that's going to give you a better opportunity to drive the ball. And the second pitch of the game is lined to right field for a leadoff hit. Ninety-two degrees. You can add ten degrees to that with the heat index. First pitch right on time at seven ten Central Daylight Time. Time and temp brought to you by the parking spot. Easy to spot, easy to park. The parking spot at KCI. So Roberts at first for Marcakis, who hit his sixth home run of the year last night and his sixth career home run against the Royals. Marcakis also has 33 doubles this season, and that is the second most in the American League. I think if Brian Roberts continues to get on and he gets fastball, that number could go up. But we know that he can hit a fastball. And I don't think he's that number two hitter that is going to be patient and try to give Roberts a chance to steal. He's going to look for that fastball, and he's going to try to drive it. Unfortunately for Roberts, he has not played on many good Orioles teams. But, man, his numbers really stand out. He is not very big. He is listed at five foot nine. He might not even be that tall. But he plays a big man's game. With all those 50 double seasons and 50 stolen bases to go with it. Well, it kind of, kind of reminds you, it puts you in this mindset of Dustin Pedroia with, with the Red Sox. Not very big, but when that bat comes through the zone, it, it's got a lot of pop in there. And, and he has some back issues that, that really have hurt him a little bit. But when he's right, I don't think there's any other second baseman any more dangerous than he is. Roll to the left side, and Bedemy picks it up in foul territory. One ball, two strikes. So Sean O'Sullivan making his second start as a Royal. And because of the odd circumstances, his last start with the Angels and his first start with the Royals were six days apart, and both were at Yankee Stadium. Beat the Yankees a week ago Tuesday, and here's what he did on Sunday as a member of the Royals. Retired the first six batters, and he gave up four runs in the third, one in the fourth. He finished strong. He retired seven of the last nine, but then was pulled out after the two-hour, 32-minute rain delay. And a changeup is lifted to left field and right at Alex Gordon. So Roberts back to first and one away. Now Suzuki will show us the Royals on defense tonight. So Gordon in left, Rick Ankiel in center. Mitch Meyer moves into right field. Around the infield, Wilson Betemeet, Unieski Betancourt, Chris Getz will also lead off. And Billy Butler and Jason Kendall is behind the plate for O'Sullivan. I ran and talked to Jason Kendall about O'Sullivan. I said, uh, what impresses you most about him? And he said the fact that he does have an outstanding changeup he didn't have his best changeup against the Yankees. And as it says fastball, you look at the velocity, it doesn't really think it's coming that fast, but it's got a lot of late life to it, and it's real sneaky. Wigginton one for four last night. He had a couple of RBIs, both on sacrifice flies, including the game winner in the 11th inning.
The Orioles might be helping out Sean Sullivan with the way they put their lineup together tonight. And you mentioned the changeup, Frank. And for a right hand pitcher, normally that's something he'll use against left hand batters. And they've only hit 176 against Sean O'Sullivan this year. And if you factor in the switch hitters, seven of the nine hitters in the lineup tonight will bat left handed. And that, like you say, it plays right into his hand. And that depends on whether his changeup is going down and away. And got that sink to it that create ground balls and swing and misses. One ball, two strikes on Wigginton. Wigginton expects to get a lot of time at third base. And he was there last night after Miguel Tejada was traded away to the Padres. Tejada making the move from shortstop to third base this year. I asked Miguel on his way out. He, he came out to say goodbye to a lot of his teammates and after the trade was made. And I said, well, what do, what do you think they're going to have you doing there? And he says, well, I play a little third and a little short. <laughs> but he said the best thing is I'm I'm going to a pennant race and it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Robert's got a very good break. I don't know if Kendall had a shot at him. So it's a stolen base. And Roberts now in his 10th game of the year has three stolen bases. Well, he really picked a good pitch to run on. This pitch was down in the dirt, and Kendall, even if he scoops this ball, probably doesn't have a shot at getting Roberts at second base. You know, normally Jason would stay down and block that ball and keep it out front, but he was trying to scoop it and come up and throw it at the same time. Change up is fouled back into the net. First time this year that Sean O'Sullivan faces the Baltimore Orioles. He did see them twice last year. It didn't work out very well for him. Didn't end up with a decision in either one of his two starts against Baltimore, but they pushed him around. And two starts, he gave up 10 runs in less than 10 innings. And the Orioles tagged him with three home runs. Missed outside with the slider, two balls, two strikes. So you're right, Ryan. Five and two thirds innings in one start, and only four innings in the second start. So the Raw's going to need a little bit more out of Sean O'Sullivan tonight. I know the bullpen's down there saying, "Hey, go deep in the game, give us a break," and they really do need a break down there. several things that O'Sullivan wants to do tonight and one of them is keep the Orioles scoreless in the first inning. The Orioles scored one run in the first last night which wasn't a big deal but in the Minnesota series the Twins were zipping around the bases in inning number one in all three games. Popped up to the right side and it's going to be Billy Butler near the bag for the out. Minnesota Twins in the three game series they scored 12 runs combined in the first inning and then Baltimore getting a run in the first inning last night. So two down and now Luke Scott and he's trying to end an 0 for 11. Nothing out of four in last night's game he did reach with a couple of walks. He has Brian Roberts at second base with two down. And a good breaking ball in for strike one. The first five hitters in the Orioles lineup all have experience against O'Sullivan and the bottom four will be seeing him for the first time. And talking about what the Orioles did to him last year the numbers are pretty good on the Baltimore side. Roberts now is four out of seven. Wigginton two out of six Luke Scott at the plate now three for five with the home run and Adam Jones waiting on deck was three for five against O'Sullivan last year.
One ball, two strikes. O'Sullivan drafted in the third round by the Angels in 2005 out of a junior college in California and got off to a great start in his pro career. In his first two full seasons in the minor leagues, he won the league's ERA title. Hold the gets. So the leadoff base hit from Roberts does not result in a run and no score at the end of a half inning. Five game losing streak tonight. And here's their batting order presented by MI Bank. So Willie Bloomquist last night, Chris Getz tonight leading off. Alex Gordon, who batted ninth in last night's game, moves up to the number seven position. And Mitch Meyer will bat ninth and play in right field tonight. It's 24 year old Jake Arietta on the mound for the Orioles. Here's the Kia report. You know, Ryan, it's not surprising that rookies pitch better on the road. It's a little less stress, a little less pressure. You know, 318 ERA. Late movement on his fastball, big break on his curveball. Orioles fifth round pick, 2007. Texas Christian. I have two two graduates of Texas Christian. They'll probably pull it for him tonight. <laughs> they won't let me know, though. <laughs> So Chris Getz, who did not play last night, and he has plenty of experience as a leadoff man, maybe not in the big leagues, but Chris was saying before the game tonight, if you look at the span of his career at a high level, and that goes back to his days at the University of Michigan playing Division I baseball, from day one in college until tonight, the majority of his at-bats have been as a leadoff man. You know, he has all the attributes of a leadoff hitter. I mean, he's a guy who's not going to drive the ball. He's going to get on base with by a bunt, by a base hit, hit a double occasionally. But he's got that that stolen base percentage that you can't look away from. And he gets on base, he's definitely a threat to go. Stolen base percentage has been outstanding for him in the big leagues. This year, in 12 attempts, he has been successful 11 times. And then last year with the White Sox, 27 attempts, successful 25 times. Oh, that's a base dealer. Still one ball, two strikes. And we touched on it last night. The question has come up, especially with the Royals starting to trade some of the veterans away and looking forward to 2011. When is Chris Getz going to get that? Long stretch of games playing every day, so the Royals can get a good look at him at second base. Well, he looks good at second base. I I like watching him play second base. And not only does he make the routine play, he turns a good double play. And that's one thing that when you're shortstop coming over to second base, it's, it's more difficult to learn is how to turn a double play. And when you on the on the right side, you're trying to figure out the different uh, techniques to use and feeding the shortstop. 
so on, on certain ground balls. So it's a learning process for a shortstop coming over to second base. And I can tell you because I, I had to do it. But when you've been a second baseman all along, he's a lot more relaxed out there. Still one ball, two strikes. Eddie Rodriguez, Royals third base coach, and he is also the infield coach. He had a great line to describe Chris Getz. I said, how do you like working with him? He says, he's great. He does everything fundamentally well. He's not flashy. He's blue collar, no chrome. <laughs> Isn't that a great line? <laughs> I never heard of the no chrome part's pretty good. <laughs> no chrome. He's everything you need. Just all the <laughs> standard basic parts that you need from a second baseman, but no flash, no chrome. So if you don't have chrome on your card, no one's going to look. That's right. <laughs> card does just fine getting you from point A to point B. <laughs> he's having quite a plate appearance here. He has fouled off six straight pitches, and he's going to make Jake Arrieta throw at least 10 in this matchup. Oh, he's doing a good job of letting the rest of the Royals see what Arietta has tonight. Another foul ball. Remember last year we talked about Kevin Seitzer and some of his criteria that he looks at. And one of them was if you go eight or more pitches in a plate appearance in his mind that's a quality at bat no matter what you do you have had a quality at bat slash plate appearance well, when you look at the fact that a lot of teams use the 15 to 20 pitch per inning mark if you can get eight pitches out of that first guy you almost killed an inning yourself so here's pitch number 12 and we'll go to 13. Struck him out. Still, some Royals fans appreciate the effort. 13 pitches for Marietta to get one out. Here are the Orioles defensively, same as last night. P.A. Jones and Marcakis in the outfield. Wigginton is Turris, Roberts, and Scott around the horn. And Matt Weeder is behind the plate. That's the Orioles defense presented by Suzuki. Kendall showing bun and taking inside. Two hits for Kendall last night, and while doing so, put an end to an 0 for 14. Scored one of the five runs in the Royals' biggest and only scoring inning, a five run fourth. The Royals didn't score again. Well, he played aggressively too. It was two outs. And he tried to stretch a single into a double with two outs late in the game last night. As a heads up play, he had to force him to make a good throw to get him out. So, whatever he can do to try to put pressure on that defense and get himself in score position, he'll try to do it. I talked to him a little bit, Ryan, about all the player moves that the Rawls are making right now. And, and, he, and I asked him, you know, how does that affect you as a veteran player? And he said, when I was younger with the Pirates and it started, it started, it started happening there. It was tough because of the emotional side of it. He said, but since I've been around a long time, then I, I know how to get through it now. He said, but in looking at the young players the Royals have here, they all seem to be well-grounded and understand the process, and, and everybody just keeps on rolling on. Oh, well, Kendall at first with one out. So Arietta's thrown 17 pitches to two batters. And now it's Billy Butler. Billy one for three with a double, a couple of walks last night, and scored a run. And Arietta throws a strike. Billy ninth in the American League with that 312 batting average. And that's a little bit outside. One ball, one strike. 
Yeah, Arietta's got to pay attention to Jason Kendall over there. Make sure he stops before he delivers his pitch to the plate. He lets him get that walk and lead. He'll take off and keep going. And now two balls, one strike. Arietta coming off a loss. And after the game, losing to Minnesota, saying he was embarrassed by the way he pitched. Only went four innings. That's his second shortest outing of the year. Gave a five run, seven hits. He ran into the Twins at the wrong time. That was a 10 to 4 Minnesota victory on a very hot Sunday afternoon. Up the middle and into center field. So Kendall stops at second. And the Royals have two on with one out. You know, Arietta was just really lucky this ball didn't hit him in the leg. He, and Billy Bull is glad it didn't. But he just got a good pitch out over the plate, drove it back through the middle, and Jason was able to get the second base. Nice piece of hitting by, by Billy Bull. So you can see there he got the leg out of the way just in time. It sounded like it nicked something. It might have gotten one of the strings of his glove on the way to center field. So two aboard for Jose Guillen. 0 for 4 last night. He did walk and score run. Jose 0 for his last seven and batting at 269. Two balls, no strikes. Uh, one thing about a young pitcher that goes out and gets beat around by a good ball club, and you come back and you say, I'm embarrassed by the way I pitch. It means that he's got a lot of confidence. He believes there's a lot more in the tank that's got to come out, and, and that, that's a good sign of a pitcher right there. A lot of guys who who don't get embarrassed by things like that, it happens to them a lot more often. Well, he's emptying that tank quite a bit here in the first inning. He is 3-0 and on Jose Guillen, and he has thrown 24 pitches, and this is only the fourth batter of the game. 13 of those to Chris Getz. Drives it into deep left center field. Back goes Adam Jones with PA, and PA makes the catch on the track. Well, that ball right there, Ryan, was all the way to the wanted track in deep left center field, and you would have loved to have seen Jason Kendall go back and tag at second base and come over to third. He leaves his ball right over the plate. Jose gets it right toward the end of the bat. Didn't quite get that solid contact because he normally would put this ball in the seats. But that's a that's a play right there after this catch is made by PA where Kendall could be at second base and tag and go over to third. And in this ballpark to that portion of the field you better get it if not all of it about 98 percent of it. And you're right about that. Ball one to Rick Ankeel. He was one for five with a run scored last night. As the number seven hitter and now batting fifth tonight. And that's into left center field. The Royals are going to get at least one run. Jones cuts it off deep. Kendall coming around to score. Butler stops at third. And Ankiel has an RBI double to put the Royals in front. Rick's got this kind of power and this kind of pop. Fastball down, out over the plate. Doesn't try to pull it, stays right through it, and really drives this ball in the alley. Ball split, jump, Adam Jones and PA both, and Jones makes a great play to the backhand side. Kendall eases home, and Billy Bull is held up at third base. That ball had to go, the ball goes all the way to the wall. Billy probably scores on that, on that hit. And now pitching coach Rick Kranitz out there to more than anything just allow Arietta to catch his breath. It is a hot night. 
Arietta has thrown 27 pitches already to just five hitters. And even though there is no such thing in baseball as an assist on offense, you can get an assist on defense. If that statistic existed, Chris Getz would get an assist, making Arietta throw 13 pitches to him just to get the first out. And now Wilson Betemi with two runners in scoring position and two down. A little bit inside for ball one. Betemi walked twice and had a hit last night. Drove in a run, scored a run. He has Billy Butler at third base, Rick Ankeel at second. The time the breaking ball is in for a strike. So Rick Ankeel moves up in the batting order. Wilson Betamete goes down a spot. He was fifth last night and batting six tonight against the rookie Arietta. Good movement there. That pitch started inside. Wilson gave up on it and it hit the corner. Well, that's a real good pitch here. This this ball ran a long way and they just saw it. Look, he saw it all the way, just didn't commit to it. But normally, if it's more inside, the hitter would give on it a little bit, and the ball would move back. But that would move right away. So he goes from a pitch that starts in, breaks over the plate, to a pitch that starts in and stays in. That was Greg Maddox pitching right there. Yes, it was. It just, it just didn't it come back, kiss that inside corner like he wanted it to. Right field base hit. Butler scores. Here comes Ankiel around third. Marquez with a strong arm, and Ankiel is safe. Well, the Royals have a three-run bottom of the first inning. Uh, Wilson picks on a curveball and really pulls it in the right field hard, I and mean, it just stayed right on it, hit right on the ball, and squared this ball up really. Real well. Now, Pekas comes up. Let's let's do a nice throw. Anchor got a great jump off second base, but that's the I think that's the most the patented slide now is go around the catcher and get that hand in there when the catcher takes a, takes the ball away, takes the plate away, and and we just did a good job in scooping that throw up from Marquez, but he gave away a little bit too much play. Enemy down to second on the throw home. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this slide this year. The catcher pulls that leg back and try to take the plate away, and you don't have the bat. You don't have the base runner slide straight in anymore. They're sliding around the plate and trying to reach in with their hands. So the catcher's going to have to take a little bit more plate away. But that's a patented one there, Ryan, where the catcher's got to reach up the line to right field, and he's going to give some plate away. Coming from left field, it's a little bit different. So three runs, and the next pitch will be number 35 for Marietta. Alex one for five with an RBI last night. That was batting ninth. He hit seventh tonight. Betemi down at second base with two down. In the air to right field, playable for Marcakis, and that's the inning. The Royals come up with three. Marietta throws 35 pitches.
in two. And before the Orioles come up in the second, here's Joel. Well, Ryan, I was talking with pitching coach Bob McClure, and, you know, he's just getting to know Sean O'Sullivan as well. But his impression after that start in Yankee Stadium was he said he seemed fearless and that he was unintimidated, very aggressive. He thinks that this trade with, for Kiaspo is a heck of a deal because Sean O'Sullivan is only 22 years old, and Max saying that he hopes going forward that he's able to stay in the rotation, but that he really believes he's got the stuff that's good enough to win and beat any team on any given day. Now it's a matter of getting that consistency. But more important, and this is what he really likes about O'Sullivan, is good pitch ability. And Mac is a firm believer that you can have great stuff, but if you don't know how to pitch, it's only going to get you so far. But if you've got the ability to pitch, move the ball around, subtract, and add on to that fastball and your, your pitch speeds, that that's going to work for you. And he believes that Sean O'Sullivan, at the young age of 22, has that pitch ability. Guys? That's a good point, too, Joel. We were talking at the end of the last inning about how, even though he hasn't had a very long professional career, he has had a measure of success everywhere he's been. He's won a couple of minor league ERA titles. He is, in another year, a third year, led his league in wins. And as a major leaguer, he is 5-3, and three, making his big league debut last year. Having some problems with the strike zone against Adam Jones. Everything was down and away. And he's going to lead off walk to Jones after the Royals come up with three in the bottom of the first inning. So, born in San Diego, when he was a junior in high school, he was the San Diego High School Player of the Year. Went to junior college one season and was taken by the Angels in the third round of 2005. Trying to mix in a breaking ball, and that's a little bit low. And now Jason Kendall a bit concerned. You're going to go out and have a chat. He a one for four with a walk and two runs scored last night. Joel, how did our first edition of Real Royals Trivia go tonight? I thought that it went very well. We had... Royals trivia. We had contestants. We had a winner. We had good game show cheesy music and themes. We had prizes. Great crowd out arrivals. Lots of good excitement. So we're going to do this every home Friday. And we did have a winner. We had uh, John ended up winning it. Shubrook Congratulations, and John. John, you know, John, any Johns out there, they won. John Shubrook won it. And he got two of three right. The other two contestants got one of the three questions right. And then we had to figure out who gets second and who gets third. The throw gets by Betancourt. I don't know if that was the best effort in the world to try and knock it down. So a stolen base. And we'll see how they score it. It would be very easy to give Jason Kendall an error on that throw. What do you think, Frank? Well, when you look at it as a middle infielder, your number one job is to make sure the ball doesn't get by. And that one... It went to the backhand side of Unesky Bedenko, but that's one, Ryan. I'd say you got to get down with the ball right there. You know, the ball got underneath his glove. It was catchable. And you just got to get down in the dirt and make sure you don't let the ball get by you into the into the outfield. So a runner at third with nobody out. And now PA hits it in the air to right field. Meyer setting his feet. Jones tagging. He's coming. And Meyer's throw sails up the line. And it is three to one. So P8 drives in his fifth of the year. And with one out and nobody on, catcher Matt Weeders. Weeders lost an eight game hitting streak last night, going 0 for 3. He did reach with two walks. Fastball is right in there. Rolled up the first base side. O'Sullivan grabs it and puts up a pretty good roadblock. Weeders is out, two down. Yeah, he'd be a pretty big guy to try to run over. <laughs> I 
I mean, you could try. I don't know how good it's going to work for you. With O'Sullivan at 6'2", 230 pounds. And now Corey Patterson, who tied the game at five in the eighth inning last night with two outs, two strikes. Off of Robinson Tejeda. And the Royals and Orioles have only played three games. And in two of the three games, Corey Patterson has hit a home run in the eighth inning to tie the game. And in both of those games, the Orioles ended up winning in extra innings. No balls, two strikes. They really didn't pick up easy pitches to hit either. Both, both those balls he hit was 96 plus. Bettencourt backs up to get a big hop. And Patterson is out to win the inning. The Orioles get a run to make it 3 1. To the bottom of the second inning, and tonight's you call it presented by Sprint. Pretty simple question: Will the Royals deal again before the deadline, the first deadline, which is tomorrow, and late in the afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern time? Text 432432. The keyword is Royals. A space A for yes, B for no. Standard text rates apply. One strike on Unievsky Betancourt on one hand last night. Had a good night at the plate, two hits and an RBI, but on the other hand, didn't handle what was a very good throw from Kyle Davies on a potential ground ball double play and allowed the Orioles to score an unearned run. He's out on a pop up to Roberts to begin the bottom of the second inning. Jake Arietta hoping for a quicker second inning than his 35 pitch bottom of the first. Some of those innings, you, you get a heavyweight fight, you go through the first inning, I mean the first round, and you get beat up a lot, and then all of a sudden you get a second win, but that inning probably won't show up until about the fourth or fifth inning to see what kind of damage it really did. And damage to the psyche as well as he was frustrated by his start on Sunday against Minnesota hoping to get off to a better start than a three run 35 pitch bottom of the first. Two balls and one strike to Mitch Meyer. He was not in the lineup last night. Batting ninth and playing in right field tonight. Just foul, two balls, two strikes. Up 
thought about it. And Meyer fills out the count. Three balls, two strikes. Arietta with a one-out walk in the first inning, and that was the beginning of a three-run inning. A walk to Jason Kendall after a long battle with Chris Getz. And Getz is coming up next. Inside for a one-out walk. And now Arietta and Getz will duel again. On one hand, Arietta won round one, striking out Getz. But on the other hand, it took 13 pitches. And Chris fouled off seven of those pitches. And who knows how much that took out of Arietta? because after that, the Royals ended up with three runs. It'll be interesting to see if Mitch Meyer is going to be put on his own in order to steal. He does have have that kind of speed that he can steal bases. Another guy that's looking for more playing time. And so it'll be interesting to see what experiments will go down the rest of this season. Will the guys that haven't been running much when they get in the game, will they be given a green light and see what they can do? I guess Chris Guest's first at bat would be under the headline of Pesky. <laughs> Doing exactly what you want to see from a leadoff man. Force Arietta to throw a lot of pitches while everyone else is gathering data. What does his fastball look like tonight? How is his breaking ball moving? Change up. A slow roller to second. The Orioles will get just one. And Getz is thrown out. Mitch Meyer moves up to second base. Now, Ryan, back before we had a, a, all the video and all the information that they have today for the players, I think that like Chris Getz would be, okay, you saw everything, you made him throw everything in his arsenal, then you go back to the bench and you give the personal scouting report to everybody else. Not as thrilled to give it when you strike out as opposed to leading off the game with a home run and saying, oh, I'll tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> well, that's true, but, but then again, they knew that that was their, that, that was their assignment. That they were leading off the game. We didn't know much about a pitcher. Then you just make him throw as many pitches, give him the movement of the fastball. What's the slider do? What's his curveball do? Does he have a decent changeup? And if he does, which way does he break? So those are the kind of things we talked about on the bench. Kendall walked with one out. He scored on Ankiel's double. And then Ankiel coming home with Billy Butler on a two run base hit from Wilson Bedemy. No balls, two strikes on Kendall. One and two. On a hot night, a humid night, Arietta grabbing the rosin bag to get rid of some of the moisture from his fingertips. Two balls, two strikes. This next pitch from Jake Arietta will be number 50. And there are two outs in the second inning. So the Royals are getting closer and closer to the Orioles bullpen. And the count goes from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Arietta, a rookie, this is just his 10th Major League start. So you know the Orioles will be careful with his pitch count. He's been going about 90, 91 pitches per start this year. And just a little over five innings per start. Kendall into right center. Jones was shallow, so a good break allows him to make a sliding catch. And the Royals are down in the second inning.
AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Panera Bread, explore a menu of hearty soups, salads, sandwiches, and breakfast items at Panera Bread. Royals with three in the first inning, a two-run lead with the Orioles coming up in the third against Sean O'Sullivan. It'll be the 9-1 and 2 hitters. Beginning with Cesar is tourists. In the second inning with the Orioles scoring. And he began with a four pitch walk to Adam Jones. He came around to score. Now Sullivan jumps ahead of his tourists. And the count goes to 0 2 as his tourists helps him out. One hit, two walks for his tourists last night. And his walk leading off the top of the 11th inning. He did not come around to score, but that got the Orioles going. Up the middle, gets backhand play, throws him out. Game three with the Orioles is tomorrow at 6:10, and it's our annual salute to the Negro League, sponsored by Sprint. And the first 20,000 fans receive a Monarchs cap, presented by Pepsi. It'll be Zach Grinke for the Royals. You can get your tickets right now at Royals.com or by calling 1-800-6-Royals. Strike one to Brian Roberts. He singled to open the game, stole second, but was stranded there. So Roberts is four out of seven against Sean O'Sullivan going back to last year. Look out. Luckily, that bat landed on the stairs. Yeah, you can hear it hit the stairs way up here. Well, that's what happens, Ryan, when you when you really throw a good change up and hit it, thinks it's a fastball, and there goes the bat helicoptering over the top of the Royals dugout. That yeah, just nicked me on the shoulder, but I got my bat. And yeah, Brian Roberts says, "To heck with it! You can have it. I'll get a new one." No sense in being booed when you've got about two boxes of bats with your name on it. Ball stays a little bit up. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, the guy stuck his leg out there. Yeah. I think it might have hit him on the knee. Or the guy in front of him that was working on some popcorn. Well, he didn't quit chewing, so he probably didn't get hit that yeah. hard. What they like to do here is they always take the bat to customer service and hold it there until after the game, and then the fan can go get it at that point. Jolted to right, Roberts didn't get all of it, and Meyer makes the play in front of the warning track. Fox Tracks tonight is brought to you by Chevy. And this is bad. He's been up a lot more. This is bad in previous at bat. O'Sullivan's been really trying to keep the ball down, and this was a very hittable pitch. Camden Yards, it might be a different story. So two up, two down, and now Marcakis out on a fly ball to left field in the first inning. His career. He did not become a regular outfielder until he became a professional. He was drafted by the Orioles in the first round of 2003, and he was mostly a college pitcher. 29 other teams saw him as a pitcher. The Orioles saw him as an outfielder, and other teams thought they were crazy to take him in the first round. Primarily a pitcher in high school and in college, he was drafted twice. By the Cincinnati Reds in high school and then in first year of college as a pitcher. You talk about good scouting. Using a first round pick on someone who hardly played the outfield. And now he's one of the premier right fielders in the American League. 
Well, you look at you probably look at his swing. They probably look at the fact that they thought he was going to develop into a nice player in the outfield and the arm strength. They look at that also, and you figure, okay, I can draft him as a player. He can always go back and pitch, but if we can draft him as an outfielder and see what we have there. It doesn't work. Back on the mound. Up the middle, gets won't get to this one, and it's a two-out base hit for Marcakis. So that brings up Ty Wigginton with a runner at first, and O'Sullivan got him on a pop out to first in the first inning. Do you know that Cal Ripken Jr. was originally drafted as a pitcher? No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that until today also. And the person who shared that with me, and we were talking about him earlier, is Eddie Rodriguez, who came up through the Orioles organization and was a shortstop, moved to second base because of some guy named Cal Ripken. And I said, really? He says, yeah, but did you know he was drafted as a pitcher? Wow. But they were going to use him as a pitcher and a shortstop, and he was just too good defensively and with the bat. And as they say, the rest is history. But the first plan for Cal Ripken Jr. in the Orioles organization was for him to be on the mound. Well, he would have been able to follow a long line of great Oriole pitchers if he didn't have been as successful on the mound as he was from shortstop. He had the arm and he had the size. Yes, he did. And he definitely had the mental toughness. Left center field, Ankiel, dead run. He won't get it. It's up against the wall. Here comes Marcakis around third, and the Orioles have made it a one run game. We don't say that very often. Ankiel on the run and doesn't get it. That's a two seam fastball right down the middle of the plate, just moving right into Wigan and swing down. And he really jumped all over it, got the head of the bat out front. And it's like you say, you hit one over Rick Ankiel's head, you've really hit it a ton. And when he gets to the track, most most outfielders will pull up a little bit, but he doesn't pull up. He goes right into the wall. So his 18th of the season, number 200 in his career. The Wigginton has driven in three in the first two games. And now he's at second base for Luke Scott. Breaking ball in for a strike. Out in a ground ball to second base in the first inning. So Luke Scott is 0 for his last 12. Last year against Sean O'Sullivan, he was 3 out of 5 with a home run. And that is to Getz on one hop. Well, the Orioles get one back, and at the end of two and a half, we have a one run game.
Tanette served as a physical education teacher at Raytown South from 1966 to 1995. She passed on her love of sports to more students than anyone could count. And even before Title IX mandated equal girls sports, Loretta made it possible for girls to play various sports, including softball, volleyball, and basketball. And she's enjoying the game tonight in the Buck O'Neill Legacy Seat. And enjoying a Royals one-run lead. The Royals, and it's still early, but similar to last night, Royals have done everything in one inning. The Royals scored all five of their runs in the fourth inning last night. Not quite enough. And three innings in the first tonight. Three and zero on Billy Butler. He singled and scored in that three-run inning. Coming home on Wilson Betamich's two-run base hit, and he's swinging three and zero and had a good swing. Fouled it back. Well, that's what I mean, man. When you're trying to get those situations like that, three and zero, two and zero, three and one, you center your pitch. And this is when you're trying to do more than just hit a single. This is when you want to take advantage of the ability to change your swing and really just try to drive the ball. Tough pitch there, and the count is full. You take a look at Billy's swing right here. Now, this is a little harder than Billy normally swings on, on the pitch before, but here, this is the pitcher's pitch down and away. Butler, Guillen, and Ankiel coming up in the third. And Billy begins the inning with a walk. Arietta has walked three tonight. One of those has come around to score. 57 pitches already. 35 coming in the first inning. And it all began with a 13 pitch battle with Chris Getz to begin the inning. Juan Samuel, the interim manager, last night didn't let rookie Brian Mattis go very far. He went three and a third innings. Got himself into trouble in the fourth and was pulled. Well, Juan Samuel definitely doesn't want to want to go to his bullpen early, Ryan. And the top four relievers in innings pitch in the L this year, the Orioles have three of them. You know, they got Albers, Hendrickson, and Birkin. I mean, that's that's a lot of innings. Right field, easy play for Marcakis. And one away, Billy Butler back to first base. Here's tonight's league leaders brought to you by your Kansas City area Toyota dealers. We took a look at the American League last night and the National League. The Braves with a two and a half game lead in the East. The Reds a half game lead in the Central. San Diego just continues to hang in there. They have the best record in the National League. Three and a half up in the West and the Giants in second place in the West. They would be the wild card. So how about your former teammate Bud Black and the job he's done with the Padres. He's gotten a three year contract extension out of it. They like him a lot. <laughs> I mean, I tell you, that's 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 great for Bud. I mean, I mean, you get you get a situation where you, you're, you're a very good pitching coach and then all of a sudden you get credited with being able to manage and then you get a job to manage and you slowly develop into it. And now you take a team that's not supposed to be playing as well as they are. And now they've got the best record. I mean, it's just outstanding for Bud. I mean, it's a made it three-year deal kind of speaks for itself. You know, when, he, when he played, we call him Mr. Freeze. But <laughs> Rick Ankiel has two hits. Down the second base is Billy Butler, so two on, one out. It's hard to leave a fastball up out over the plate to Rick Ankiel. He's so strong. He just balls away from him. He takes it and just pulls it in the hole. And this is outstanding hitting right here. And it, when he's hot, he can carry your ball club for a while. You don't see many pitchers in regard to Bud Black end up becoming a manager. It's such an isolated position. And just looking up and down the American League, and I don't think there are any former pitchers managing a team in the American League. Many pitching coaches of successful teams have gotten a chance to manage. The most frequent position, and maybe perhaps the most successful position, 
turning out to be a manager would be catcher. Two balls and no strikes on Wilson Bedemy. He drove in two in the first inning. Just picked on a curveball. He let, just left it up out over the plate. He waited for it, had a good part of the bat on it, and was able to get play two runs on that base hit to right field. into right field again. Butler to third. They will not mess with Marcakis arm who throws it all the way to the plate on the fly. So the bases are loaded with one out. Butler at third base. Ankiel at second and now Wilson Bedemy has two hits. He picks on a fastball this time Ryan. It stays down in the zone. Lefties like the ball down there. And hit, this is a line drive. Hard hit ball on the ground to Marcakis. They got uh, Billy hesitated at second base, and that really cost him right there. And Eddie Rodriguez noticed that and, and have pulled up the stop sign right away. So a big opportunity for Alex Gordon as the Royals lead by one. Royals at one point had a three nothing lead, and Alex slashes the first pitch foul. Alex ended the first inning with a fly ball to right field. He drove in a run last night. Marietta trying to keep the ball down, hoping for a ground ball and a double play. Alex is looking for something up. That is too high, and it's one and one. It'd be nice to see him come through here. This, this is a big inning now for the Rawls, a big at bat for Alex. Swings over the top. One ball, two strikes. Well, that's the pitch right there. You want to try to hit this ball away, but Alice goes out so far and he rolls over on it and rolls right over the top of it. That's when you got to stay with and try to drive it in the left center field. A leadoff walk and then back to back one out singles for the Royals in the third. Plays off this time. Two balls, two strikes. I'm sure the to catch the pitchers are paying attention. They saw that pitch location and type of swing they got out of it, and they came back with the same pitch. I wouldn't be surprised if they come in on this pitch and then go back outside with the next pitch. Again, fouled off to the left side. Now 70 pitches for. Arietta, and they begin to get busy in the Orioles bullpen. Got it over the inside corner. Alex not sure he has a few words for Wally Bell two down. Situation, Brian. The base is loaded. You can't take anything too close right here. And this, this ball could have been off the plate, but in this situation, if you can get the bat on it and foul it off, this is what you want to do. You don't want to leave it up to the umpire in this situation. You rather, you better off try to foul it off and come back for the next pitch. Well, another base is loaded situation for Unieski Betancourt, who has two grand slams this year. That's a grand slam against the Red Sox and the A's. Out and a pop up to second base in the second inning. Popped up and out of play. On one hand, Marietta has no place to put Unieski Betancourt. 
then again, Betancourt at times will chase some pitches out of the strike zone, so he doesn't necessarily have to give in to the hitter at all. Not at all, and, and it seems like more men on base, the more he will chase. And I think it's one of those situations where you don't have to throw an actual strike. And if you'll chase that fastball up like that, why not go back with that pitch again? Maybe you can get yourself a swing and a miss, and, and best, you get a pop up. Reaching at a slider. First grand slam coming off of Tim Wakefield and jumping all over a knuckleball at Boston. And then here at Pompton Stadium against the Oakland A's. Time he got a fastball up and in. Chop towards third on the line foul Wigginson runs to the bag with third base umpire Laz Diaz called it foul. So we'll do it again. At times this year Unievsky Betancourt has got himself in trouble early in the count swinging at pitches out of the strike zone but then his discipline improves to a point where Kevin Seitzer has tried getting through to uni by saying hey why don't you begin the at bat in the two strike approach. And some guys just get so revved up and they don't want the pitcher to get that first pitch fastball by him and then they get down to the last that last strike and they do concentrate a lot better. But they anticipate the pitcher making that stake early in the count. Off the glove of Arietta, but he picks it up behind the mound. And the Royals with a great opportunity in the third inning. Let it slip away. They leave the bases loaded. Top of the fourth inning, and that little girl has a front row seat. Tonight's Roadrunner Turbo Speed Pitch comparison Sean O'Sullivan at 94, Jake Arietta at 95 so far through three innings. You can double your speed with Roadrunner Turbo from Time Warner Cable. Adam Jones on a four pitch walk scored in the second inning, also stole a base. So O'Sullivan is missed with five straight against him, and that's the first strike from O'Sullivan to Jones tonight. Jones stole second, went to third on an air charge to Kendall, although Frank and I thought that Unieski Betancourt could have done a little better job of trying to keep that ball on the infield. Jones ended up going to third and scoring on a sack fly. He is out and a foul out to Billy Butler, and he is 0 for his last 11. So a scoreless first inning for O'Sullivan. 
gave up the run in the second. And then a two out RBI double to Ty Wigginton in the third. And we see lightning off to the north northwest. No sign of the grounds crew. The tarp is covered. Not just rolled up, but rolled up and covered. That means we're good for a while. There are different stages for the threat of weather at Coffin Stadium. The tarp covered, we're good. Tarp uncovered, there's something close. Tarp uncovered, grounds crew behind it, look out. Two quick outs for O'Sullivan in the fourth inning as he gets a soft roller from Felix Pia. O'Sullivan has not yet had a 20 pitch inning yet. And one thing going back to the grounds crew after seeing the ground crew and a few of the places we've been we know for a fact that our ground crew knows what they're doing when it comes to putting the tarp on and taking the tarp off. Somebody has to teach new grounds crew around the league on how to handle a tarp and I think Trevor Vance ought to hold a seminar. Wouldn't Fly be bad. guys in here. That would be a good idea. Well, some, it, it just some that just goes down to just rehearsing. <laughs> Kevin Shank telling me that Trevor will bring the guys out here when it's not raining at all just to practice. You have to. Tarp. You really have to. And I, I, I tell you that that tarp gets heavy and, it, and if they happen to wait a little bit too long and the wind is really blowing around it can be tough to handle. Right now just kicking back watching the game. And as Trevor told me years ago that most of the time. This is a great job because you're sitting back and you're watching baseball every night. <laughs> but. When the whistle blows and the storms arrive. You got to be ready to go and it could be a long night of taking the tarp on pulling it off. Preparing the infield fixing the mound every half inning if it continues to rain staying late to make sure the field is ready for the next day. And the other night during the broadcast auction. We had a Royals fan that. Won a bid to. Spend a day with Trevor in the grounds crew. I would want a day with some weather. <laughs> Wouldn't you. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, that's a total experience, though, if you if they have the weather with it, for sure. Right to Getz. He handles it on a short hop, and the inning is over. So, for the first time tonight, O'Sullivan retires the side in order.
The Orioles 3-2 to the bottom of the fourth inning. It is Law Enforcement Heroes Night. And the Royals are paying tribute to all law enforcement officers, recognizing those that help us in our everyday lives. And all police departments in the area were welcome to take part in the celebration. And discounted tickets were offered to officers and their families tonight. Some of them are working. And to show our appreciation in a small way, and this was organized by Joel, all of us are wearing golf shirts with the logo of the Fraternal Order of Police. Now, do we have to turn these back in after the game? I hope not. Pretty chunky, too. They are. Now, is this something that you might want to keep in your glove compartment? Let's get out of jail free pass. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, if by chance, one of us, and we're all excellent drivers, you know, people don't realize that we have to pass a driving test before you're hired by Fox Sports Kansas City. But in the event that we get pulled over, you know, would you have time to slip on one of these golf shirts? And when they come to the up to the side window there, hey buddy, how you doing today? You probably make them like my shirt. You probably make them nervous. Yeah. All, all, <laughs> all the arm movements will be going on inside the car before they get there. <laughs> A leadoff walk for the second straight inning given up by Arietta. Last inning, the Royals loaded the bases with one out, but it did not result in a run. The six plus pack offers Royals fans the ability to select between six and 16 games this season, including contests against the Yankees and Twins at a special discounted rate. And as an added bonus, you'll receive all future notifications regarding the 2012 All Star game prior to the general public. Twins were just here. The Yankees will be here on the next homestand. And New York's only visit to Coffin Stadium this season. Line great play at third base by Wigginton. So a tough 0 for 3 so far for Chris Getz tonight. Well, this play here just shows you how how gifted guys have to be to play at this level. The hand-eye coordination. He hasn't had much much time to react to this line drive off the bat of Chris Getz. I mean, he just goes right up, and it's right there. The timing was just perfect, and he came up looking to throw to first base. The game ended last night on a very similar play. Alex Gordon with a smash to Luke Scott at first base. Not sure if Luke Scott was using his glove to catch the ball or to protect his face. But he did make the catch to end the game. Yeah, that's what you say. Did you catch the ball or did it catch you? <laughs> I mean, it, it's amazing. You ask most first basemen, the scariest thing for them is holding runners on and getting caught sideways and not square to the hitter when the ball is hit. Kendall is walked and lined to center, lost a hit on a sliding play by center fielder Adam Jones. And Jason scored one of the three runs in the bottom of the first inning. The Orioles are convinced that Mitch Meyer might take off. Mitch has the speed, but hasn't had many opportunities this year. And it's just 0 for 1 in stolen base attempts. Well, the Orioles have allowed 22 successful steals in a row, consecutive steals in a row, so you might as well try it and see what's, see what's going on. He's got that kind of speed. Pretty good bunt by Kendall, and he is out as Arietta comes off the mound, makes a good throw. And Kendall wanted that probably a little farther up the line and closer to the line. A little closer to the line. He said when you drag one for a base hit, you want the ball just fair or just foul. And when you, when you sacrifice, you want it right out in front of the plate, hopefully just right out on the grass. He just, just didn't get it turned far enough, and Arietta was able to get down and make a nice play. Did a bare hand grab of the ball, and made a nice throw. Just got it first base. Coming up on Sunday during Hybe Royals Live, 
You'll get to hear a conversation that I had with Jason Kendall today about a drag bunt with the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1999 that almost ended his career. Badly dislocated his right ankle, broke his ankle as he landed heavy on the bag. And that was just a few years into his big league career. And it's something that he has considered now 11 years later when he catches his 2,000th career game. It almost came to an end back in 99. One and one on Billy Butler. But all you need to look at is that face. And you can see the fight and the determination that a dislocated and broken ankle wasn't going to hold him down very long. This goes back to being mentally tough, and Jason's about as mentally tough as they come. I, I managed him in the fall league in 95, the year before his first year in the big leagues, and you could tell then that he had tremendous leadership qualities. His father, Fred, was a major league catcher, played in the big leagues for 12 years. And spent some time with the Royals as a bullpen coach when Buddy Bell was the manager. Two balls, two strikes on Butler. A dark angry sky off to the north northwest so far the storms have missed the ballpark over the outside so a leadoff walk and Arietta gets out of the fort Three runs in the bottom of the first inning, hoping not to duplicate what happened last night, where they had a big inning that put them in front, but it ended up being the only inning that they scored. Well, that's true, Ryan. And tonight they came out a little bit, little bit more fight early, scored early, and trying to hold on. Uh, O'Sullivan's really doing a good job in keeping the game where it's at, keeping the ball down, and they hope to get him deep in the game tonight. This is Honorary Officer White, <laughs> and I'm his uh, what first deputy? Is that what I would be? Well, would I be adding you be Barney? Which is <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, it's Law Enforcement Heroes Night at Coffin Stadium, and all of us at Fox Sports Kansas City are wearing golf shirts with the badge of the Fraternal Order of Police to honor them. Many are here tonight with their families. Others are working the game as they are every night. So we hope they're enjoying the game, and we hope they stay dry. Ball one strike to Corey Patterson with heavy thunderstorms all around Kauffman Stadium. None at the moment are threatening the ballpark. But we've been seeing bolts of lightning off to the north, northwest. I would guess that uh, Carney and Liberty, maybe even 
up into Cameron are getting some rain. Right up by 35. North, that is. Corey Patterson grounded out to short in the second inning. He'll be followed by Cesar Asturias and Brian Roberts. Orioles with one run in the second, one run in the third. The Royals had a huge inning last night, a five run fourth. And the Orioles, on the flip side, was just a little here and a little there. They scored in six different innings, no more than one run. And the final run coming in the top of the 11th. Into the right field corner, but Patterson was out in front, and it's still two balls and two strikes. And left his Kurt left his breaking ball really up too much and to the inside to Patterson. He's got the little up in his swing, and so he likes the ball down toward the middle inside. Thought about it and able to stop his swing. Three balls, two strikes. Patterson's younger brother Eric was with the Oakland A's and was traded this year to the Red Sox when they were looking for some help when Dustin Pedroia went on the disabled list. Caught by Getz at second base. Well, Chris Getz had a pretty good night defensively at second base, and he makes his play. This is not an easy play at all. He just makes his play look so simple. You know, Patterson hits a line drive, squares it up nicely, and it look, it look how under control he is when he makes his play. And this play is not easy. Piece of cake. Well, on one hand, you say it's not easy. On the other hand, you say it's a piece of cake. Well, because of the way he reacted after he <laughs> caught it. I, I mean, a lot of guys are catching the ball and they're stumbling and trying to get the balance back. I and mean, he just glides right through this play, catches it. Next two steps, nice and easy, like I had it all the way. You know, take a guy who hasn't played a lot and you get, you're playing the infield, a lot of it is timing. You know, just being able to see the ball off the bat, react the right way, and be on the right step. and. And that just comes with all of his pregame prep preparation, just getting out there and working on his game. But I mean, he looks like he's been playing every day. Right to Betancourt. So Solomon gets a couple of ground balls and two down with the top of the order coming up. Well, last night was Hairband Inc. College Night, and the next Inc. College Night is coming up on August the 12th. That's the Royals and the Yankees. College Night offers select tickets for high school and college students with a valid ID for just $7, plus food and beverage specials in the outfield plaza concession areas. Going to give you a break. Nobody needs to dress up for this one. We've had Top Gun Night. We've had hair band night. We have 80s, 80s night. Was it just it was just 80s night, wasn't it? O'Sullivan now has retired seven in a row. Patterson is tourist, and Roberts are down in the fifth inning.
Bottom of the fifth inning, Royals trying to end a five game losing streak tonight. It's been a tough second half for the Royals. It makes us think about 1977. The Royals, the best of Frank's recollection was they were six and a half back at the break. And then in the second half, shortly thereafter, won 16 in a row. There were three pitchers that won three games each. And that is a club record 16 game winning streak. Can you name them? Waiting on home plate umpire Wally Bell, who left in between innings. So Jay Carrietta will get a few more warm up tosses. And we'll remind you that this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre with. Frank White, Joel Goldberg, producer Kevin Shank, director Steve Kurtenbach, associate producers Al Broughton and Sam Abramson. And the producer of Royals Live is Jeff Graham. Here comes Wally Bell. He had a conversation with Royals head athletic trainer Nick Kenny a couple of innings ago in between innings. And Nick Kenny. Brought him out some water. So it is a hot, hot night. 92 degrees at first pitch. The heat index was 102. It was hot. Guys. It was hot. Let's get the black shirt on, the heavy gear. Jose Guillen, Rick Ankeel, and Wilson Betamid. Arietta throws a strike. He has not had an easy inning at all tonight. Gave up all three runs in the bottom of the first inning, throwing 35 pitches. In the second inning, a one out walk. In the third inning, the Royals loaded the bases with one out, and that's the biggest inning so far for both sides. The Royals could have really pulled away if they did something there, but Arietta. Got out of that without allowing a run. And then a leadoff walk last inning, but Mitch Meyer never got to second base. Driven to right field, slicing into the corner, and Markakis will play it off the wall. The end of second, Markakis with a strong arm, but the throw is late. Jose Guillen picks up career double number 300. Jose stays with this fastball and drives it down the right field corner. You see Marquez, he did a good job here recognizing that he either couldn't make this catch. He played it on one hop and made a strong throw to second, but wasn't in time to get Jose again. But a great job of hitting by again and a great job of playing this ball by Marquez in right field. Jose Guillen is safe at second base, safe and secure, New York life. Leadoff man on for the third straight inning, and now Rick Ankiel trying to at least get a ground ball to the right side. No 17 this year, 300 in his career. Ankiel is two out of two, a double, an RBI, a run scored in the first inning, and he singled in the third. 0 and 2. He had fastballs that hit his first two times in here. Arietta slowing the ball down a little bit, getting him a little out front. One ball, two strikes. Just trying to get through five innings and moving up on 100 pitches. He is at 95. 35 of those in one inning. Struck him out with a fastball up, and that is Arietta's fourth.
Box tracks brought to you by Quick Trip. But you can see where the off speed pitches down under Rick Anke. He'll swing for it on the first three pitches, and that really set up that high fastball. He threw those chains up. He wants to hit the fastball, and he elevated above his swing, and he chased. So from one hitter who has two hits to another, and Wilson Bedemid is also driven into batting at 364. Matt Wieters wanted that pitch down. You can see with his glove motioning down before the pitch was delivered, and it is too low. Inside almost hit him on the knee. Got a meet in the Royals three run first inning. Hit a two out two run single. And then singled in the third inning to load the bases with one out. But Arietta struck out Alex Gordon, got Unievsky Betancourt on a ground ball back to the mound, and the Royals came up empty. Well, you get you in a close ball game like the Raws are tonight, and Jose Gain leads off with a double. And and you got to get him advanced to third base. You got to put him in position to score. Over the inside, two balls, two strikes. So you would think that Arietta. Would be running on fumes. He is right at 100 pitches, and he has done that in a very short period of time just four in the third innings. But he's still making quality pitches, and maybe his best pitch of this inning was that last one to Wilson Betemi. That down inside, probably looking for an off speed pitch. In the dirt, and Guillen will move up to third. So now Betemi can get Guillen home without a base hit. This is one of those pitches you call in the dirt and you really want to get it blocked and Matt we just tried to backhand this ball and you really should try to cup the ball in front of you and try to block it back out in front of the plate. He tried to backhand and went off his glove and Arietta is credited with a wild pitch and Jose again moves up to third base. The infield comes in so Betamit needs to lift the ball and he takes just inside. So four walks to go with four strikeouts tonight. Yeah, very, 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 very tough pitches to the pitch to take right there. You look at all the work in the inner half of the plate, trying to keep him from getting his hands extended. And five strikes brought to you by Quick Chip shows us exactly how close this pitch was. How close was it, Frank? <laughs> wasn't close. Wasn't close enough. <laughs> the umpire said no. And out comes Juan Samuel. So Arietta with no chance to win the game if the Orioles were to come back in the sixth inning and gain the lead. So it's Jason Birkin and a Chevy call to the bullpen with two on one out in the fifth.
been four pitches in four and a third innings, and he leaves behind runners at first and third with one out. All right, tonight's AT&T trivia question: Who are the three pitchers that won three games each when the Royals won 16 in a row in 1977? Royals closed out that season, winning 38 of their last 47. Splits one of them, right? How about uh, Jim Colburn and Dennis Leonard? I had two. I had Split and Leonard and Gura, but I didn't have Jim Colburn. I didn't want you to think I cheated, so I just wanted to show you this little. I carry this magazine around. It has all our lineups way back to '73. So Jason Birkin. With Guyan at third base, Betamid at first, Alex Gordon at the plate. Over the outside for strike one. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played on a team any hotter than that team. Uh, 38 out of 47, you come in the ballpark every single day just knowing you're going to win the ball game. Regardless of what the score was in the first, you felt you was going to win the ball game. That's a great feeling. Broken bat, one hop to Roberts. Out at second base, and the Orioles turn a double play, and it has been a frustrating night for Alex Gordon. This Missouri Moment is brought to you by the Missouri Division of Tourism. Go to visitmo.com to start planning your next Missouri getaway. And welcome to the state capitol and governor's mansion in Jefferson City. Completed in 1918. Covers three acres in downtown Jeff City. Also houses the Missouri State Museum and features exhibits of historical significance. Visitors can tour the home to see its beautiful architecture and period furniture and to learn the history of many of the state's great governors. So the Royals hanging in there by one. They have stranded seven tonight. The Orioles have Nick Markakis, Ty Wigginton, and Luke Scott in the sixth inning. Two balls and no strikes from Sean O'Sullivan to Markakis. With two outs and nobody on in the third inning, Markakis singled. Ty Wigginton doubled him home. Markakis is also flied out to left. Two balls, one strike. Nick Markakis out of Young Harris College. And I'll give you a dollar if you can tell me where that is. Well, he's from California, so it's somewhere in California. <laughs> <laughs> I've got young Harris College in Georgia and drafted in the first round of 2003. Lead off walk. So Sullivan had retired seven in a row. John O'Sullivan coming over. From the Angels in a trade, 
And we ask you where the Royals deal again before the deadline, which is tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. 67% saying yes, 33% saying no. Text 432 432, enter keyword Royals, a space, A for yes, B for no. Breaking ball in for a strike to Wigginton. He has doubled in a run and popped out to first. Probably one of those situations where they would like to deal again, but you just don't want to make a deal just to make a deal. As far as some trades that have already been made in the Central Division, Edwin Jackson is going to the White Sox. Some people think the White Sox are not done with him. Matt Caps going from the Nationals to the Twins, and Johnny Peralta staying in the division, going from the Indians to the Tigers. He has two home runs for the Tigers tonight. Minnesota parting with their prized catching prospect, Wilson Ramos, and sending him. Washington for Matt Caps, and apparently he's going to take over for John Roush as closer. Well, that increases the yes vote to 72%. Keep voting. Shallow center field, and Marcakis will go first to third on the base hit from Wigginton. So the tying run is at third base with nobody out. Wigginton has a six game hitting streak. But the only thing about Wigginton, he, he's not just pulling the ball. I mean, he's staying with the pitches down, out over the plate, went the other way with it. Earlier, he drove one in the left left center field over, over the head of Rick Ankiel. So he's he's utilizing all, all the all the park and just staying with the pitch where his pitch. Did a good job hitting this ball. You see Mark Kakis going first to third without any hesitation. And the batter is Luke Scott. He has grounded out twice to Chris Getz. And now 0 for his last 13. Balls, no strikes. Working nine years with Denny Matthews, he would talk about today's two teams and say one team has made the most of the least, and the other has made the least of the most. The Orioles have scored two runs, but they have only stranded two. The Royals have scored three runs, but they have stranded seven. And a couple bases loaded situations, especially where they could have really broke this game wide open. Right center field. Ankiel is going to try and circle around, but he's going to play it conservatively to second base. Make sure Wigginton stays at first. And Luke Scott still 0 for 13, but a sacrifice fly ties the game at three. Well, Southern will tell behind that the two balls, no strikes. He's got to come in with a strike right here. Left the ball up. Luke Scott pulled off of it a little bit, but got enough of it into center field to get the RBI in from third base. John O'Sullivan, as a major league starter, goes about five and a third innings per start. He is at five and a third right now. He goes about 88 pitches per start, and he is at 81 right now. And the Royals, mindful of that, and have Blake Wood just starting to play catch out in the bullpen. And now Adam Jones is hit by a pitch. That puts runners at first and second with one out, and the second time that Jones has been on tonight. Uh, falling behind, having to come in with a little pitch, to give up a sack fly, RBI, and then the high fastball that rides in and hits Jones on the elbow, you might be looking at maybe a little fatigue. 
Well, you know, Blake Wood wants to get back in there, giving up the winning run in the 11th inning last night and taking the loss, dropping to 0-2. It'd be good to see him come in and, and have a good outing. He definitely needs it, not only for the team, but he also needs it for his own confidence factor also. Well, we can't overlook the manager. Though. The manager always needs to see good things on the field for his confidence factor. Third base umpire Laz Diaz just came running in to check in on home plate umpire Wally Bell, who has had to leave the field a couple of times tonight. Now, Wally Bell. Doesn't look like he's 100% tonight. Back in 1999, he returned to the field after having open heart surgery. He had a quintuple bypass. So, if he's not feeling right on a night like tonight with that medical history, I don't think you want to push it. Yeah, it seems like the heat's kind of bothering him a little bit here, too, Rhino. So Todd Tishner, who is from Garden City, Kansas, is going to run into the clubhouse and put the gear on. And it looks like this crew will finish tonight with a three-man crew. Although you don't want him to throw too much on a hot like night like tonight, to waste too many pitches when he is kind of getting to the end of the line. And now Laz Diaz going to come out. He'll not only take the lineup card, but I would assume he would become the crew chief. James Hoy is the umpire that he's talking to. And James Hoy and Todd Tishner are technically minor league umpires who are filling in for a couple of regulars that are on vacation. So, Laz Diaz, who has been a major league umpire since 1999, I would assume he takes over the role as crew chief. Royals baseball is brought to you by Verizon, the network with the most 3G coverage. And by Chevrolet, come see for yourself why a thousand people a day are switching to Chevy. See your Kansas City area Chevy dealer. So a delay is Molly Bell, who appears to be under the weather, is out. And Todd Tishner will take over behind the plate. And while we have a moment, I can tell you a little story. Last night I was walking out of the ballpark, and Todd Tishner went out of his way to introduce himself to me, being from Garden City, Kansas, and a family of Royals fans. He now lives in Holcomb, which is just a little bit west of Garden City off of Highway 50. And it's been a good year for him. He is a Pacific Coast League umpire. And someone who, for the past couple of years, has been called up to fill in for regulars when they go on vacation. But as it's turned out for him this year, he hasn't had to go back to the Pacific Coast League. It's been one guy on vacation after another. So he's been a big leaguer all season. His family makes the trip from Garden City into Kansas City to stay with him when he comes through KC. And now he'll be called on to go from second base umpire to behind the plate with. Wally Bell coming out.
Kevin Shank, our producer, asking a very astute question, which sounds somewhat silly at first, but actually, it's a very good question. Will he get the home plate umpire, Todd Tishner, will he get a few pitches to look at when he comes out? And he might. I mean, because when pitchers warm up in the top of the first inning, it's very common to see the home plate umpire get behind the catcher, see the ball out of the pitcher's hand, and kind of reset himself with the strike zone. Well, that's true. Not so much with a fastball, but just to see a couple breaking balls and see how the ball's moving. And, you know, it might be one of those situations where, I, I, you know, I never really paid attention to see if they do get an opportunity to do that. Well, we hope that Wally Bell is all right. It's it's created an awkward situation for Sean O'Sullivan again. We told you right before Adam Jones was hit by a pitch that as a major league pitcher, Sean O'Sullivan goes on average about five and a third innings per start. He is at five and a third innings right now. He goes on average about 88 pitches per start. He is at 81. It is hot. It is very humid. And so he wants to keep his arm warm, but there isn't a whole lot of fuel left in the tank. He doesn't want to burn up that fuel with no hitter in the batter's box. Well, you, what you try to do, Ryan, is you want to just, if you anything, you just want to try to play catch. You don't want to actually pitch as if you're throwing pitches in between innings. And you're right, that will wear you down. But just to play catch, keep the arm loose, and that's usually what you want them to do. A lot of times they'll turn around and just play catch with one of the middle infielders and not actually throw to the plate. It's nice when you tell stories about umpires. I think the fans like to hear nice stories about umpires. We sometimes tend to only talk about the things they don't do right. Well, and a great guy, too. I mean, I, other than umpires that I had met before, that's the first time in my career that I've had an umpire come up and introduce himself to me. We're both walking out at the same time. and. Big Royals fan now trying to make his way to the big leagues as a full time umpire. But as I said so far, that's about what he's been filling in for all the big leaguers that have been on vacation. Well, I told you you're famous. You just wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just don't believe me when I say it. <laughs> well, he introduced himself to me. He would have fallen over if it was you. <laughs> I don't think so. He got who he was looking for. <laughs> and by the way, he didn't see any pitches. He did not. Well, you can understand here. I mean, he realizes how long the delay is. So he wants to get the game going. So the delay is over. One run home for the Orioles in this inning to tie it at three. And now O'Sullivan back to work with two on, one out. And facing Felix P.A., who drove in the first run for Baltimore back in the second inning on a sack fly. Delay of almost nine minutes. Over the outside, one ball, one strike. Right side to the hole, gets, picks it off. His out is at first and just barely gets PA. So Wigginton moves up to third base and Jones to second. There are two down. That's a real nice play by Chris Getz at second base there, Ryan. Just goes way to his left, makes that turn under control, and makes a nice throw to Billy at first base. So that's an easy play and a hard play at the same time because that's where it gets hard is when you make that spin and lose sight of first base so you got to pick it back up when that right foot comes back down. I think Billy's got to once he makes that catch across the line he's got to he's got to try to get out of there a little bit faster especially with Felix P.A. running down the line. Oh and one on Matt Wieters. 
who came into the series batting 251, but he also came into the series with an eight game hitting streak. No hits so far in the first two games. He is 0 for 5. Tonight he is grounded out to O'Sullivan and grounded out to second base. Royals have tied the game at three in the sixth. The Royals scored all three of their runs in the bottom of the first. And a change up is pulled to Getz. So the Orioles tie the game, but they leave two in scoring position. And we go to the bottom of the sixth, tied at three. The Royals scoring their runs in bunches and the Orioles scattering their offense and we are tied at three to the bottom of the sixth inning. We hope you'll join us here at Coffin Stadium on August the 14th. The 6-10 game is the Royals and the Yankees and the first 20,000 fans receive a 1980 American League champion poster set presented by AT&T. For details or to buy your tickets right now, go to Royals.com or 1-800-6-ROYALS. 1980, Frank, you finally got past those New York Yankees. Swept them in three. That felt so good. A, a, a win for every year we lost. Looks like Sean O'Sullivan might be done for the night as Dusty Hughes is throwing in the bullpen as the Royals come up in the bottom of the sixth inning. 87 pitches for O'Sullivan in six innings. Betancourt, Meyer, and Getz in the bottom of the sixth and facing Jason Birkin. He came on in relief of Jake Arietta in the fifth inning, inherited runners at first and third and one out, and got Alex Gordon to ground in to an inning ending double play. Off the knuckles, Roberts sprinting out into right field, and he will come up short. Betancourt is one for three. The Royals have had the leadoff man on now in each of the last four innings. A leadoff walk in the third led to the bases loaded one out. Orioles got out of it. Leadoff walk in the fourth didn't turn into anything. And then last inning, the Royals got a leadoff double from Jose Guillen, and he got to third with one out, but the Royals couldn't get him home. So the Royals have done a good job of get him on, a little better job of get him over, but not a very good job of getting him in. It's all about clutch, and clutch is getting them, getting them in the, getting them in across that home plate, and you can do that. That's the guys that drive in RBIs and. And the ones that don't, those are the ones that are the table setters. So you need table setters, you need guys that can drive in, that drive those guys in once you get them in position. I 
right over the outside. And the count is one and one to Meyer. Mitch has walked twice with one out in the second inning and then leading off the fourth. But the Royals couldn't get him up to second base. So Jason Birkin in his first full inning of work. Some lightning followed by thunder off to the north. And Frank White pulling out his weather radar on his cell phone. And there is a heavy thunderstorm that is just to the north of Kansas City. We might get the bottom edge of it and some light rain. There's a few drops that are falling at the moment, but the good news is no sign of the grounds crew. Betancourt runs, and the hit and run worked to perfection. Down into the left field corner. Betancourt is going to be waved home. PA has trouble in the corner, and the Royals have regained the lead. That's an excellent piece of hitting by Mitch Myers. The fastball off the way. He went right with this pitch right inside the third baseline. Bedford's running all the way. PA has a hard time picking it first, getting it up on the on the first grab, and Unesco was able to continue across home play. There's the ball running away from Mitch. Mitch did a great job. And you see PA right here. Off the heel of his glove. Did it. When you mishandle him that deep in the outfield, that's 90 feet right there automatically. Now, if that was basketball, that was a nice little move there. You know, put the ball off your glove, through the legs, grab it on the other side. Just can't shoot. <laughs> a great piece of hitting right there. So Mitch drives in his 28th. And now Chris Getz will at least try and get him over to third base. Popped up. Shallow right center. Long run in for Jones. And that is not deep enough to advance Meyer. So Chris Getz is 0 for 4. I don't know a lot of times you don't like to, to call a sacrifice run, but when you get in that situation there, you're just taking the lead. You got a man on second base, and, and you don't know if you can pull the ball when you want to pull the ball. And that's when you take advantage of some of your skills. And Chris Guest has those bunting skills that he can take advantage of, and that would have been really appropriate right there to get Mitch over third base. And such a good one. He's a good bet to get a base hit when he lays down. Especially when Jackson ball the second base, he was cool. You know, Scott had, had a lot of time at first base, so you get him to leave, vacate that bag, you might get your base hit. So Meyer at second, one out. Jason Kendall 0 for 2. He has scored a run after reaching with a walk back in the first inning. Strike to Kendall. So three runs in the bottom of the first inning, but then four frustrating innings for the Royals. And they stranded six in innings two, three, four, and five. But another run answering the Orioles' run in the top of the six to go back out in front. Short and Myers back to the bag. Jason Birkin tonight allowed more runs in two thirds of an inning than the Orioles bullpen did last night in seven and two thirds innings. That was really a key for Baltimore. As starter Brian Mattis came out after three and a third innings, he gave up all five of the runs, but the bullpen really picked him up. Seven and two thirds scoreless. Will walk Billy Butler and try and set up a force at every base with Jose Guillen coming up. <laughs> they are playing the the 
chicken dance song in between every pitch. So with the implication that the Orioles are being chickens here by not pitching with Billy Butler. Well, they plan the odds on that. Oh, Billy has a, a great plate coverage. He can use both, ends, both sides of the field. And, and he puts a pitch into the best run producer also with one swing. He can break this game wide open. Jose had been 0 for 9 after his fly out in the third inning. Let off the fifth inning with a double, went to third on a wild pitch. It was his 300th career double, but after getting the third with one out, did not come home. Strike one from Birkin. And back in the fifth inning, this is what he's capable of right here to stand on top of a fastball and drive it right off the right field wall. That's a lot of strength right there. And just miss. On one of the left center field, also just on the end of the bat. So he has the kind of power that he's a game breaker type swing. And a game breaking type swing right there, but he missed. No balls, two strikes. Hoy is still umpiring at first. Right now, the umpiring crew has been reduced to three. Wally Bell had to leave the game in the middle of the top of the sixth inning. So Laz Diaz is at second base. James Hoy is at first. Todd Tishner behind the plate. Right now, no one is umpiring at third. Right center field, Adam Jones is there. And that's the inning. But the Royals regain the lead on Mitch Myers double. With the Royals in front 4 3 to the seventh inning. Royals coming up with three in the bottom of the first inning. Rick Ankiel driving in a run with a double. And then Wilson Betemi followed him with a two run single. The Orioles got one in the second, one in the third, one in the sixth to tie it. But in the bottom of the sixth inning on a hit and run, Unievsky Betancourt coming around from first on Mitch Myers' double. And the Royals have a one run lead. And if the bullpen can hold it, Sean O'Sullivan will win his first game as a Royal. Dusty Hughes in on the Chevy call to the bullpen. And left hand hitting Corey Patterson takes a strike. Royals used four relievers last night. Dusty Hughes not among them. Kyle Farnsworth, Robinson Tejeda, Joaquin Sori, and Blake Wood picked up for Kyle Davies last night as the game went 11 innings. Patterson 0 for 2 tonight. He hit a big home run to tie the game in the eighth inning last night. 
Down in the count, one ball, two strikes. It's about two and a half months separating the hits. But Patterson in two straight games against the Royals had game time home runs in the eighth inning. So Sean O'Sullivan with six innings gives up three runs on four hits. And now it's up to the bullpen. Hold to Butler. He gets a nice big easy hop and beats Patterson to the bag one away. Joel Goldberg. Well, Billy making the play there, guys, but it has really been a busy night on that side of the infield for Chris Getz as he has seven assists on the game plus one put out. So that got us to thinking about Royals records for one game. And you know, I don't know if you'll get this kind of question on real Royals trivia, but how about for you guys? How about the single game regulation nine innings record assists for a Royal by a second baseman? Who do you think? Jose Offerman. No. <laughs> Mark Rutzelanek. No. I'm, Carlos Fabulous. No. I'm not guessing. <laughs> okay, well, he's not in the house, but Frank does share the record with Cookie Rojas as far as extra innings go. They each had an 11 assist game by a second baseman, but in nine innings, Cookie Rojas had 11 assists on May 17th, 1973. So, gets he's got a little work to do, but he's got seven so far. All right. How about by a shortstop, Ryan? Ray Sanchez. No. UL Washington. No. Fred Patek. 2004. Angel Barroa. Yeah, that wasn't 2004 assists in a game. That was the year 2004. Yes, Angel Barroa at 12. All right. Nice work, Joel. Exhaustive Joel. research by Joel Goldberg. It's amazing too. I mean, he doesn't even do that with a computer. He just flips through the box scores real quick. <laughs> He's got the box scores on his phone. <laughs> and then I broke out my abacus. <laughs> Up the middle, and Betancourt behind the bag throws out his tourist. Two down. So a good start for Dusty Hughes, and now he gets Brian Roberts. There was always one stat that I really didn't care to lead the league in, Ryan, and that was double plays. Because it, to me, that was like too many men on base. And it means that you give up a lot of runs somewhere along the way. So if you didn't lead the league in double plays, you're able to turn them when they present themselves, but you did not necessarily want to lead the league in double plays. There are times when a double play is huge to get you out of the inning, but you're right, that's a statistic. <laughs> A team doesn't normally brag about. We lead the league in turning double plays. That means you lead the league in men on base, too. And you don't want that kind of pressure on your defense during the course of the year. Roberts, one for three, singled back in the first inning and stole a base. So he'll flip over to the right side. Off the pitch, 3 0. Fox Tracks brought to you by Quick Trip. But well, Hughes is at the top of his own with that fastball, and then he's down with the first two. So just trying to get himself in the eyes of Todd Tishner and say, okay, what do you want to call? And he goes back with the same fastball, and he calls that one a strike. Another ground ball. Ben Court throws him out, and a very good seventh inning for Dusty Hughes.
Blues as we look at the American League scoreboard presented by Panera Bread. Toronto beating up on Cleveland. Sean Markham from Excelsior Springs wins his 10th. Tampa Bay is over New York. Detroit leading at Boston. Johnny Peralta traded from the Indians to the Tigers has two home runs. Lucas Harrell, who is from Ozark, Missouri, allowing just one earned run in six innings in his major league debut. Minnesota's in front of Seattle. And Texas is leading the Angels. Angels are nine games back. Wow. This is left hander Will Omen. He'll get Rick Ankiel, Wilson Betamete, and Alex Gordon, so at least two left hand batters in relief of Jason Birkin, who gave up a run in an inning and two thirds. One and one on Ankiel. He has two hits, drove in a run with a double in the first inning, and then he scored. Singled in the third. He struck out in the fifth. Two balls, one strike. Well, reminds me of when we had George Brett on during the last homestand. You can see the flash of lightning. And that was behind the Holiday Inn. Ball smothered by Scott to Omen, who gets to the bag right in front of Rick Ankiel, so he is two for four. Remember, during the last home stand, we had George on. He was talking about the 1985 World Series DVD set and lightning again behind the Holiday Inn. It hit the, uh, an electrical transformer, knocked out all the power. The Holiday Inn lights went out, the Denny's light went out, Drury Inn. Adirondack College, FCA, all of the highway lights. The only thing that you could see, other than would look like a black tarp behind Coffin Stadium, the headlights and tail lights on I-70. Well, that was a nice flash, and that was a nice rolling thunder. You almost thought Friday night fireworks had already started. Uh -huh. <laughs> Went around, so he's down. No balls, two strikes. Working on a perfect night. A two-run single in the first inning, singled again in the third, and walked in the fifth. Now that's got, that's the first bunt attempt that Wilson Benemit's made all year. One and two. So Benemit is hitting at 364. Now that's with 88 at bats. Hold into the corner, hooking, and just foul. Looking at the flags out in right field, and with the lightning flashing out beyond the flags, you hope this isn't the calm before the storm. Because there's been a gentle breeze all night coming out of the south on a hot night. And now the flags look like they are just tied to the flag poles. Heavy storms just to the north. Very light sprinkle falling at the moment. Grounded to his tourists. And the Orioles shortstop throws out Benemy two down. Alex Gordon comes up with two outs and nobody on. It has been a frustrating night for him. Going back to the first inning. With the runner at second base and two down. Alex just missed one and flied out to the warning track in right field with the bases loaded, one out in the third. Alex taking a call third strike from Jake Arietta. And then with runners at first and third and one out in the fifth, rounding into a 4 6 3 inning ending double play. So we'll see how he does with two outs and nobody on. And Will Oman throws strike one. I had a great opportunity to have a huge night, and that, that's what frustrates you most when you come in those situations, bases loaded, no outs, one out. That gives you an opportunity to really break the game open, have a great night. Jones first broke in and now corrects and runs it down. So Alex drops to 0 for 4, and the Royals are finished in the seventh.
gentle sprinkles. You all right, Phil? <laughs> there we go. Thumbs up. Four to three Royals to the top of the eighth inning. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, Miguel Cabrera leads the Tigers into Boston to take on Kevin Euclid and the Red Sox. Fox Saturday Baseball, presented by Taco Bell, returns this week at 3 p.m. Central. Kyle Farnsworth, who had turned in an inning and a third scoreless last night with a couple of strikeouts, comes on in the eighth inning with a one run lead. So Farnsworth gets the eighth inning. After Blake Wood was called up from AAA, that was his role for a while. And then Robinson Tejeda had pitched the eighth inning on a few occasions. Tejeda giving up a game tying home run last night, and now Farnsworth gets the eighth. And he misses inside to Nick Markakis. Markakis has scored twice on base with a single and a walk. And that's grounded into center field for a leadoff base hit. And Taco Bell will show us the pitch location on the delivery to Markakis. Let's see right here, Farnsworth moves this ball out over the middle of the plate. Had to test some run to it, but it ran right in the middle of the plate, and Marquez drove it right back through the middle. So Marquez on three times tonight. Last time up was a leadoff walk, and he came around to score. And Ty Wigginton takes strike one. Wigginton has two hits. Drove in a run with a double in the third inning. We got word on home plate umpire Wally Bell, who had to leave in the top of the sixth inning. He left because of heat exhaustion. Butler and Getz over near the dugout suite and Billy look out almost went into the suite the ball is in and out and the count is 0 and 2 on Wigginton. Well maybe if you'd help him out when he got over there. <laughs> Everybody vacated the scene. Yeah. I mean, here comes Billy. It's a library over there. Nobody's saying a word to him. Yeah, okay. Thank you. It's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, Wally Bell left the game because of heat exhaustion. The good news is Royals head trainer Nick Kenny reports that his vitals were stable. He will not return. And just to play it safe and for further observation, he has been transferred to a local hospital. Wally Bell had to leave the game in the middle of the top of the sixth inning. OK, let me take that back. He was the announcement was he was not transferred to a local hospital. So even better news. into right center field. There is nobody there. Nick Markakis is on his way to third base. Gary Allenson is going to wave him home. The Orioles have tied the game for the second night in a row in the eighth inning. Big night for Ty Wigginton. That's his third hit and his second RBI double. Like I say, Ryan, he's really been hitting the ball where it's pitched, and here's a a black little cutter that Kyle left right out over the plate up and he did a good job just staying right with it and he drove this ball in the right center field and it couldn't be cut off goes all the way to the wall and Markakis is able to score from first base on this play hits third base and never never breaks stride. So the Royals have suffered blown saves in the first two games of the series 
And now 15 on the year. So runner at second, nobody out. And now Luke Scott lines it into left field. So three have come to the plate against Farnsworth. All three have reached. And runners at first and third, nobody out. And that base hit for Luke Scott puts an end to an 0 for 13. Well, there's a lot of pressure on spots like this one set up to the closer. Of course, there is no pressure like the ninth inning, but right behind it is the pressure of the eighth inning. And Farnsworth has done an excellent job since May pitching in the sixth, in the seventh. I can't think of many hold opportunities like this. One run in the eighth inning where it's been Farnsworth instead of Tejeda or Blake Wood or very early in the season Roman Cologne but there's a difference between the sixth and the seventh and then the eighth inning and the ninth inning. But Ryan when you get down to those last six outs it's, it's, it's real tough the closer you get to winning the game the tougher it is to win and that's why it takes a certain kind of guy with a certain kind of mental toughness to be a closer but the setup guy is not as much pressure but when you're trying to protect a one run lead in the eighth that can be pressure because you have to get it to the closer. But the bullpen's been extended, and you look down the bullpen now, nobody's up. This is going to be Farnsworth's day, and, and he's going to have to figure out how to get, get himself out of this jam. Jones 0 for 1, on base twice with a walk, and he's been hit by a pitch. He is 0 for his last 11, and that is grounded to Betamid. It is off of his glove. Everyone is safe, and Baltimore takes the lead. Wigginton was preparing himself. He may have rolled an ankle but he was preparing himself for a home plate collision and then when there was no throw he stumbled across home plate to give Baltimore the lead. Well, I'm really surprised he even went on this ground ball Ryan. He, he, was, he was all he was really all confused by this whole play by itself and even he's got a little smile on his face but normally with no outs you don't you don't run on this play. Yeah Wilson reached for it a couple times if he was able to get it on the first try. We're going to stop halfway. He would have had a shot at him at the plate. So it's an error on Betamit, the second error for the Royals tonight. And now P.A. going to be asked to bunt. And he takes outside ball one. So four to the plate, four of reach, two have scored. P.A. with a sacrifice fly in the second inning. That gave the Orioles their first run. Otherwise 0 for 2 and this is the first time in the series even though the Orioles have scored 11 runs in the first two games. This is the first time they've scored more than one in an inning. Inside two balls no strikes. Saw this last night late in the game, Frank. The opponent trying to give the Royals an out. And the Royals having a difficult time putting the ball over the plate. And I think that's the most one of the frustrating things about pitching sometimes is you know they want to give it the out, but you got to throw like a four seam fastball down the middle of the plate, make them bunt it. You want to elevate it maybe a little bit. And with his kind of velocity, with Farnsworth's kind of velocity, you may even induce a pop up. Blake Wood was throwing earlier in the game. Dusty Hughes pitched a scoreless seventh, and now Farnsworth has given up two in the eighth. PA gets the bunt down. Kendall's got it. He'll go to third, and the Royals get the first out of the inning. Really heads up play. The, the Rawls got the Rawls had what they call a will play on as the shortstop breaks right away on the play, and that allowed Bencourt to be there to take that throw from Kendall on, on this play. Kendall comes out, he knows exactly that Bencourt's going to be there at third on the will play, 
and then he, he gets they even get that force out at third base. And now the Royals hope for a double play. Matt Wieters is 0 for 6 in the series, and all of his outs tonight have been on the ground. Had a pitch up, and he missed. Wieters has grounded into nine double plays this year. No balls, two strikes. Farnsworth looked like he was mostly going with his four seam fastball. That's the first time he put a little movement on it, cutting down and in on Wieters. Yeah, the four seam is a good pitch when you know they're going to be bunting, Ryan, but now he's trying to get a, a ground ball and try to get a double play. And, and that slider down underneath the swing, you can get a ground ball from that play pretty quickly. He's alive. Marcakis opened the inning with a single. Wigginton doubled him home. And then with runners at first and third. And a ground ball to third. The ball going off of Wilson Betamete's glove. Wigginton coming down from third to score. After a force out at third, runners at first and second, one out. Not a bad idea there. The Orioles trying to get another runner over to third base with one out. And Adam Jones with good speed. He's hasn't been very successful in stolen base attempts. But you don't want to forget about him at second base. Or Felix PA at first. One ball, two strikes. Kind of speed on the bases, anything in the alley or down the line, both these guys have an opportunity to score. Down through history, the Oilers haven't been really known as a running type team. They always waited for the big, the big inning, but they've got a little bit better balance on this team. They've got good speed all, all down through the lineup. Farnsworth really having a lot of trouble with his grip, and almost after every pitch, he's going to the back of the mound and rubbing his palm in the dirt. Give him a little better grip on the ball on a warm, sweaty night. Plus, very light rain is falling. A little different than most pitchers. Normally, you go to the rosin back because it gives you a little bit better grip, but got a little bit more tackiness to it. And but he's just with the dirt, and the dirt sometimes can be smooth uh, once once you pick up the baseball, and it kind of slips out of your hand. Where the with the rosin, it kind of gives you more of a grip. Inside the weeders, so the count from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. And does Juan Samuel gamble here and send the runners? Weeders has struck out 59 times this season and batting left handed. That's a clear lane for Jason Kendall down to third for a chance to strike him out, throw him out, double play. Yeah, it's definitely a clear lane, but I, I tell you what, it's not a bad gamble. You got a one run lead, and you're late in the game, you got two of your fastest guys on the base, so any questionable ground ball, you're going to have runners in scoring position. And anything gets through, you, you'll have a run on it on a ground ball through the infield. And if it's a double, both guys are going to score. So I don't, I don't think it's a bad gamble, right? Even though the catcher has a great opportunity to throw to third base. Bencourt trying to keep Jones close. They do run, and Wieters fouls it away. The Royals have two stolen bases tonight. Roberts in the first inning stole second, and Jones stole second in the second. The throw from Kendall got past Bencourt. Jones went to third and came around to score.
They run again. Weeder strikes out. And there is your double play. Orioles score two to take the lead. Stadium middle of the eighth, the Orioles lead the Royals 5-4. Immediately following the game, we've got fireworks Friday. We've got a big crowd at Rivals and Boulevard Royals Live. We'll take a look and break down Sean O'Sullivan's home debut with the Royals. Also look back at a very good first inning for the Royals today, including Chris Getz, his big at-bat, that long 13-pitch at-bat. Ned Yost reaction and much more coming up on Boulevard Royals Live. Guys. All right, thank you, Joel. So we get to the back end of the Orioles bullpen. Mike Gonzalez, the former Atlanta Braves closer. He went an inning and a third last night, scoreless with a strikeout. And in the bottom of the eighth, he'll get Unieski, Betancourt, Mitch Meyer, and Chris Getz. He'll run one right-hand batter and then two lefties after Betancourt. Betancourt singled and scored, leading off the sixth inning. That put the Royals in front 4-3 after the Orioles had tied in the top of the sixth. He is one for three, and now Gonzalez missing badly with the first two pitches. Orioles bullpen came through with seven and two-thirds scoreless last night. Two and one. That was the longest stretch of scoreless innings for the Orioles bullpen since September of 2007. So almost three years ago, that many innings without allowing a single run. Three balls, one strike. Gonzalez freezing like a statue, hoping that Todd Tishner would call it a strike. They started off with two bad pitches to uh, Unieski here. You're down by a run in the eighth, and he swung 2-0, and oh, and he comes up with another bad pitch. Sometimes you got to take him all the way to the to, to half the swing, and that will give you a better opportunity to get on base, but maybe that's the benefit of getting a base hit. Second hit for Betancourt, and both of his hits have come leading off the inning. So the tying run at first with nobody out, and Mitch Meyer coming up. Well, Gonzalez gets his pitch in, and Uni did a good job of just pulling his hands in, and really, he didn't really hit this ball hard, but just enough to get it out in the center field. And mainly just pulled in, hit it mostly with one hand on this swing. And now Meyer gets the bunt down. The Orioles will throw him out at first. So it's been a very productive night for Mitch Meyer. Two walks, a double in the sixth inning that put the Royals in front, and now a sacrifice bunt gets the tying run to second. Gonzalez has had as many as 24 saves in a season. Now 
That was back when he was with the Braves. And right now working as the eighth inning setup man for Alfredo Simone. Who picked up his 15th save last night. This will get Betancourt over to third as Turris throws out Getz. So Chris is 0 for 5. Betancourt is at third with two down. And as Jason comes to the plate, we go back to the top of the eighth inning. And tonight's Chevrolet play of the game. That turned out to be a big play for the Raw. Struck out Matt Wieders on this pitch. Was able to throw out Adam Jones coming down from second base trying to steal third base. Both guys running on the pitch. And that's right on the bottom of the foot, just where you want it. Mike Gonzalez staring at Juan Samuel as he comes out of the dugout. As if to say, you're not going to take me out, are you? And yes, he is. So Gonzalez gets two outs. He leaves a runner at third. And it's Koji Uihara, right-hander, coming on to face Kendall. Koji Uihara comes on with the tying run at third base and two outs in relief of Mike Gonzalez. Uihara's been on the disabled list twice this year. Started the season on the DL with a hamstring injury and then problems with his elbow at the end of May. He was on the DL last year with right elbow problems. Betancourt singled off of lefty Mike Gonzalez. Gonzalez then retired Mitch Meyer in a sacrifice bunt. And Chris Getz on a ground ball to short. And now Uihara and Jason Kendall. Kendall will bunt. Wigginton is in at third. High and away for ball one. Royal scored three of their four runs in the first inning. Kendall started the rally with a one-out walk. And scored on Ankiel's double. Otherwise, 0 for 3. He has faced Uihara once and is 0 for 1. Well, Jason's always a tough out, especially when he gets the two strikes around. In this situation, he's come through quite a bit for the Royals, and he just seems to be able to work himself into a good pitch and really square the ball up. Two balls, one strike. Kendall this year has driven in 33. And just less than half of those have been with two outs. That's the fourth most on the Royals. Got a fastball by him. That's a little bigger swing than you usually see Jason take right there. He just really tried to unload on that fastball and now this is when he really gets tough and he just cuts down his swing and, and just try to put the ball in play. And a 
left field. PA is back. PA is there. And the Royals leave Bettencourt at third base. Five four Orioles to the top of the ninth inning. And Baltimore has come back from being behind three nothing. This might be the rally dance. They might want to save that for the bottom of the ninth inning as Blake Wood comes on for the top of the ninth. So back in the saddle after giving up a run in two innings last night the run coming in the 11th and that was the difference in the game with the Orioles winning six five. He'll get the eight, nine, and one hitters beginning with Corey Patterson. In fact, the Royals had that smelled out pretty well. Patterson looking first pitch fastball, and Wood goes off speed. Well, an outstanding first pitch from Blake Wood, and it shows he's got the ability to adapt and, and make changes when he has to. But it'd be really good for his, his ego, for his mental toughness, for everything from to have a good outing this inning. And hard to Chris Getz. He recovers, throws him out. So for Chris, as Joel pointed out to us earlier, that would be eight assists. So he is three shy of the record in nine innings, which he will not get. The best he can do is 10, which is two outs remaining. One ball, no strikes on Cesar is Turris. He has grounded out three times. One of those to Chris Getz. It was his Turris who got things going for the Orioles in the 11th inning against Blakewood last night. He reached with a walk. Brian Roberts singled to put runners at first and third. Then Nick Marcakis grounded into a fielder's choice. And his Turris stayed in a rundown long enough. In between third and home. So that even though he was eventually out, Roberts went to third, Marcakis to second, and then Roberts scored on the sacrifice fly. Two balls, one strike. Alfredo Simone getting ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Royals have the heart of the order. Billy Butler, Jose Guillen, Rick Ankeel, and if anybody gets on, Wilson Bedemy. Two balls, two strikes. A really nice pitch by Blake Wood. That's a two-seamer, Ryan, at 91 miles an hour. You see how it just goes down and away from that bat. 
And that's that's a, a new pitch for Blake. Would normally throw that hard fastball, 94, 95 mile with sink, and now he's got that two seamer working for him. That creates a lot of movement. Three balls, two strikes. And he was getting outs quick. I mean, he's just coming right at the hitters. They're putting the ball in play. And even with his power arm, wasn't getting a lot of strikeouts, but a lot of ground balls early in the count. Early in the count, and he went through a stretch where his, his velocity seemed to increase, but the ball seemed to straighten out a bit, and that's when he started to get hit. Up the middle, Betancourt can't get it. And it's a one-out hit for his tourists. Well, this pitch is hit on the ground, Ryan. It's hit firm up the middle, and you can see Unieski. He's got to try to figure out a way to catch this ball and stay on his feet and make a play. He probably could have knocked this ball down, but he's trying to set himself so he could he could not only catch the ball, but also be able to turn and make a throw to first base. But I think the ball just beat him to a point. Seven stolen bases for his tourists this year. He has been thrown out five times. So not a very good percentage. And the Rose have been really working to Blake Wood to try to be quicker to the plate. And this is an area that, you know, if you're going to be an eighth inning closer, or I mean not close, eighth, eighth inning setup guy, or even a seventh inning setup guy, you're coming in with a, trying to protect a one or two run lead, then you got to be quick to the plate. you got to be able to control the running game in some fashion. So the question becomes here, is Blake more focused on getting to the plate quickly so the runner cannot advance on a stolen base, or is he focused on the hitter? One ball, one strike to Roberts. I'm sure he's kind of split. I'm sure he's thinking about both of them. You know, when you're a young pitcher coming out, of, even a young player, and you're working on something new, you not only want to try to put it into action and make it work, you know, you always want you want your coaches to come and say, "Hey, you did a great job." And so he's probably concentrating on throwing strikes and on controlling the running game. One and two on Roberts. Well, you can see where the velocity is down around 93. He's getting a lot more sink on his fastball, and when he as there's times he's been up to 97, 98, and that's when that fastball really stra have straightened out. I can't remember, you remember Jason Grimsley when he was pitching here. Mm -hmm. When he was down there 93, 94, he had great sink, but any time he got to 96, he straightened out and he got hit. His turret was flinching over at first base before that throw over there. So he might have, about, might have been thinking about taking off on the 1-2 pitch. But runners do like to run on this pitch. You, you know, you don't see many managers pitching out much anymore and then the one two count is usually a breaking ball count that's why you see more runners run on this count running and Roberts grounds it into center field. His tourists had a chance to go first to third but decided not to challenge Rick Ankiel but that base hit hit the front of the mound and shot up so it got through but it took some of the fire out of the ground ball and made Rick Ankiel have to charge in even more to get it. Well that's true that's he goes back with his two seamers so has to go down and away Roberts gets a good part of the bat on it you can see where he hit the mound and just uh, went went right over the base. Sometimes I'm hitting that mound in the front of the mound, it picks up a little bit of speed. That's one time you wish he was running because everybody would have converged in the middle and that ball probably would have been caught. So two on, one out. Nick Markakis has had a full night already. Two hits, a walk, three runs scored. Now he's thinking about driving in a run. Lakewood misses down and away ball one.
is Turris at second, Roberts at first. Good movement on that pitch, 95 at the knees, one ball, one strike. Well, Blake was doing a pretty good job, Ryan, just varying the speeds of his pitches, adding and subtracting, and doing a good job staying down. He's getting his ground balls, but balls back through the middle are going to be hard to catch. Did he go? Well, if you're going to appeal here, there is no third base umpire. So you would go to the second base umpire. But the Royals didn't ask for an appeal. So Todd Tishner does not point to Laz Diaz. Wally Bell left the game in the sixth inning because of heat exhaustion. Three balls, one strike. And the report was that he was doing all right. His vital signs were stable. And he was not transferred to a hospital. But is not expected to return. Chance for two. Gets to Betancourt. To Butler. So we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Royals are down by one. Top of the ninth inning with the Royals down by one. And now the Royals in the bottom of the ninth with Billy Butler, Jose Guillen, and Rick Ankiel against Alfredo Simone, who saved the game last night. The Royals in the bottom of the 11th had two hits, but there was a double play mixed in. The Orioles turned three double plays, and Simone picking up his 15th save. He has two blown saves on the year. So far, the Orioles' bullpen has been outstanding. Seven and two-thirds scoreless innings last night after Brian Mattis went three and a third. And now three and two-thirds innings tonight, giving up just one run. So one run allowed in 11 and a third innings. Raining harder. So some of the fans are moving up for cover as Simone gets ready to pitch to Billy Butler. Inside ball one. Game three tomorrow at 6-10. Hy-Vee Royals live with Joel is at 5-30. Zach Grinke against Brad Bergeson. And the final game is on Sunday afternoon. Billy grounds it to short. His tourist picking up a wet baseball and is on target to Luke Scott. So Billy is one for three. Alfredo Simone, he has had quite a journey in professional baseball, originally from the Phillies organization, and was with them until 2007 
In 2003, the Phillies discovered that he was not Carlos Cabrera. He was Alfredo Simone. <laughs> In 2006, he was one of those rule fives you don't hear very much about that is sent to one team and then eventually returned. Guillen grounds it to short, raining a little harder, and his tourists throws him out two away. In 2006, the Orioles actually picked him up in the rule five from the Rangers, traded him to the Phillies, his original organization, and then returned to the Rangers. So he did all of that in 2007 camp. And now, after Tommy John surgery last year, is a big league closer. Ankiel up the right field line, foul. Whoa. That guy was reaching out over the railing and took a foul ball off of his chin. One ball, one strike on Ankiel. Yeah, that ball really skipped up along the line. They hit the railing and, ooh. But he kept it off of his lips. Wow, the nose is so close. One ball, two strikes. Well, at some point, I think every male, whether it happens at age five, like it was for me, or that guy looked like he was about 40, we all get that scar underneath our chin from something. <laughs> Ankiel with two hits, including an RBI double tonight. Inside, and Ankiel really was the biggest out, or two outs, for Simone last night. But the Royals down by one in the 11th. Mike Avila single, but then Ankiel grounded into a double play. That was big because then Unievsky Betancourt single, and Simone got Alex Gordon. On a line drive, man, it was more than a line drive. It was a rocket to the first baseman, Luke Scott, to end the game. Three balls, two strikes on Ankiel with Wilson Betamede on deck. Well, Rick will be ready to let everything go on this pitch. He's got he's chances he's going to get a fastball. That's what, that's what Simone really likes to throw in this situation. Don't want to walk him. Don't want to put the go-ahead run on first. Basically go after Rick Ankiel and see what happens in this situation. He will take a walk. So the time run at first with two down. And up comes Wilson Betemy. Betemy did not see Simone last night. This will be the first time he has faced the Orioles' closer. At the plate, two out of three, two hits, a two-run single in the first inning, but he committed an expensive error in the top of the eighth, which allowed the Orioles to take the lead. Ground ball past Scott and into right field. Ankiel will go first to third. And it is only appropriate and Alex Gordon comes to the plate. Well, Wilson does a good job taking advantage of this hole in between second and first. It's a hard ground ball, and ball gets by Scott. Rick Ankle's able to go first and third on this base hit. And Scott dives for it, gets by him, and you see the water coming up off the grass, and this is not going to be an easy ball to throw. And Rick Ankle's able to go first and third easily. Willie Bloomquist is going to run for Wilson Bedemy. Well, here's an opportunity for Alex Ford to get his night right side up. In the first inning, with a runner at second and two outs, he flied out. With the bases loaded, one out in the third, he struck out. With runners at first and third in the fifth inning, he grounded into a double play. And he has flied out to center field. So he has had opportunities all night. But the Orioles have been one step ahead. It's one of those nights you can wake up in the morning and say, man, I've driven five runs. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's quite possible. But the opportunities have been there. And this is the biggest opportunity of the night for Alex Gordon right here. Remember last night, 
Alex ended the game with a line drive, a blur to the first baseman, Luke Scott. Simone taking his time as a steady rain has been falling. He's been working on the bottom of his spikes to dislodge the clay. And now after grabbing the rosin bag to dry up his right hand, he's ready to go. Ankiel at third. Bloomquist at first, two down. Well, Alex's last at bat hit a long drive to the left, the left center field. Had a good, put a good swing on the ball. The ball really jumped off his bat. If he gets his pitch, the Royals could be walking away from this one. Ramon asking for a new baseball. He was doing a lot of work on the last one. And then you can add in the perspiration on a steamy night, trying to find the right grip. He cannot afford. To miss with Alex Gordon. Into the right field corner, deep. He does it! Having a good swing as to the, the, he had bad before, and all he needed was to get the right pitch. But he's got, a, he's got the ability to, to end this thing with one swing, and that's what he does right here. He gets the fastball in a half up from Simone, and he hits it in the right field bullpen. So he's been getting closer and closer all the time. And here he is. That's the head beat time right there. <laughs> 7 5 Royals. Let's go down to the field, and here's Joel. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Fireworks Friday here at Kauffman Stadium gets an early start with Alex Gordon, the walk-off home run, and the first question he had for me was, <laughs> do I have a black eye? They, they got you pretty good in there, huh? Yeah. Haven't had a walk-off for a while, so I guess they hit you pretty good when you get to the, get to the plate. So, I know, it felt good, and uh, it's good to uh, get off the losing streak. All right, you get off the losing streak, the walk-off home run. It was a rough night at the plate for you, and, and, and you answer all those questions with one swing of the bat. How's the adrenaline feeling right now? Uh, you know, I just need to step up. You know, I left a lot of guys on base today, and uh, luckily I got a good pitch to hit and uh, finally did something with it. All right, take us back through that at bat, your approach, your thought process, and then just what you're thinking as you're running around the, the bases there with a win. Well, I wasn't thinking home run. I was just thinking line drive, try to, you know, tie the game up somehow. And... Uh, um, it just it just felt good, good swing. All right, how about the frustration that you had earlier in the night? You talked about leaving guys on base. I know you weren't happy with the strike and then the double play later on. So how about being able to make amends? Yeah, it definitely worked out uh, at the end. But, um, you know, I felt bad for uh, not picking up my team at first. And uh, luckily we had nine innings to get it done. Well, you don't get to see a walk-off home run every single day. What does that feel like? And to be able to do it in front of a really nice crowd here tonight as well. Well, it's good to be back here. You know, it's, it's been a rough rough time, but, you know, it's good to be back here. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you. All right, that is Alex Gordon as he gets a huge ovation here at Kauffman Stadium. We'll have to check guys on that black guy tomorrow because he took a beating from his teammates. Yeah, I guess that's what happens, guys. <laughs> and it's worth it. So good for him. Alex wins it. Oh, and by the way, Blake Wood picks up his first major league win. So big night for Alex Gordon, a big night for Blake Wood, a big night for the Royals. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 